Thank you for joining uh, for this first session. Uh, so um, my talk is NLP for music and audio. Uh, first, a little bit of acknowledgement. So uh, this talk is uh, based on several of the talks that I did with my colleagues in the past. Uh, first is the NLP for music information retrieval a tutorial at Izmir 16 conference. Uh, that was when I was working at the Music Technology Group, the MTG, at the University of Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. Um, and uh, the second is the uh, building a personalized voice voice assistant for music uh, at the NLP for Music and Audio uh, workshop at the Izmir 2020 last year. So this is a work that uh, we did at both research uh, in Framingham and Boston uh, area um, where I'm, I'm working now. Um, yeah, so what this talk is about, uh, the title is NLP for Music and Audio. Uh, I want to kind of share a little bit about uh, my story here. Uh, I have been working in both communities of NLP and audio, uh, such as these ones that you're seeing on the slides. Uh, so um, what, what I want to achieve here in this talk is really to share uh, a little bit of uh, uh, what I what I've learned uh, in this corner of, of my kind of intersection between the NLP and music audio fields. Um, uh, in particular, uh, I have played a number of different roles in these communities, for instance, from an individual contributor to a program committee member reviewer to a uh, tutorial instructor to a uh, uh, organizer, right? All of the different roles. So I thought it'd be interesting to uh, to show like what are the uh, these like lesser known communities and then what are the role of NLP in them. In, uh, in particular, I want to talk about these two workshops that was more heavily involved. One is DK's workshop stands for detection and classification of acoustic scenes and events. And the second is NLP for music and audio workshop. Uh, so I will touch on those later. Uh, more specifically, I will start with a uh, a uh, small example on uh, mu building a, a music uh, virtual personal assistant uh, to identify some of the challenges of the conversational AI in the, in the music domain. And then I will dig a little deeper into the field of uh, music information retrieval, and just kind of the background field that powers the applications such as a music VPA, right? And then we broad broaden that scope a bit more to, from music to general audio. So just kind of talk about the latest developments. So yeah, so first music, uh, v, what is a music VPA? It basically, it's uh, uh, something like the example here. Uh, users wanted to listen to uh, some music. And so uh, I think the two challenges are not only like you have to identify the correct commands, but also you have to, uh, uh, you know, you have some background uh, recommendation engine that is very knowledgeable about music and also do some user modeling on their preferences. Uh, so music recommendation and the understanding about music is also crucial. So for instance, uh, to start with a very simple example, play old days in the living room. So here, uh, I I don't think this is much different from other domains, right? Uh, we do some kind of, um, uh, you know, entity tagging with some kind of slot filling, right? The old days, is it a track or is it an album? Is it, a, you know, maybe a band, right? We don't know. Uh, uh, then the lo uh, living room is a location, right? And then uh, in the same time, we have to do uh, intent classification. In this case, is play music intent. Uh, so the challenges, including, of course, uh, uh, handle variety of ambiguity of natural spontaneous speech, uh, incorporate domain knowledge in music, and work fast. I want to focus on the first two. For instance, uh, we might use a uh, kind of typical workflow here in terms of parsing uh, and intent classification, right? So uh, it's a hybrid approach of uh, grammar, the CFG context-free grammar, um, which has uh, has a high precision but low recall quick the prototype because you can write out some of the, uh, uh, the these uh, CFG, right? And then quickly, right, and prototype. And then you can uh, generate, also generate synthetic training data for new commands 
for ML, which is brings us to our second component, the ML component. Uh, could be encoded by, you know, any type of RN or like um, transformer, right? Uh, and then uh, performing at least two, two of these tasks together uh, in a multi-task set setting. Uh, so this is pretty typical stuff. The real challenge here is the, in the music domain in particular, is the uh, ambiguities for entities, uh, and, uh, especially in the case of entity linking. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, in this architecture, the, the role, the challenges of uh, entity linking in the music domain. For instance, uh, in this case, uh, play old days, right? So uh, presumably the, the user wants this old days by Chicago sound. But the challenge is, is that uh, in music, first of all, the, the, the track and album and artist names are very difficult for ASR. And second of all, highly ambiguous, many ent entities with the same and similar names. So just to give you a feeling here, uh, <clears throat> creative track uh, album names, right? So these, you can imagine ASR having a hard time with this. And uh, highly ambiguous, uh, these uh, kind of alternative spellings, because, uh, you know, this is all about creative, right? Uh, and then uh, tracks that are kind of very similar in, in you know, in names, but very slightly in their spelling, right? Which one do you mean, right? And then um, uh, also just the, the confusion between entity types is also very crucial here, right? You could say that play some blues, uh, is blues in style or album? Do you mean that? Or some blues might be a track or album, right? So this can all happen. Uh, so we did a little bit of a, a dig in here and find out um, this confusion matrix, which shows that uh, how to read this is basically, for instance, 79% uh, of track names also have the identical tra track name uh, in the database, uh, another track, right? And the same between like album, the 43% of album names has another track with the same name uh, in the in the space, right? So this is a, a just a, a quintessential snapshot of uh, what it looks like, uh, challenges, entity linking here. So yeah, so what I'm alluding to is, is really like, uh, I mean, entity linking is just one small piece of this puzzle, right? If we want to, you know, this, this play old rooms in the living room is, is just simple command. Uh, if, you, if you've done everything right with NLP, uh, you know, knowledge base, uh, these, these kinds of things, uh, you still be able to, uh, get it right, especially like if you take into account user data, right? Maybe old days uh, that are by the specific band is most popular and most played, right? Uh, but uh, what if we want something more uh, kind of, uh, um, you know, sophisticated, like the, the example uh, that I showed in the beginning, right? Uh, recommending things, right? And uh, knowing like about uh, these kind of uh, musical knowledge is very uh, important. So uh, I'm, I will show a little bit of uh, the NLP work for music information retrieval here uh, in the second section. So music information retrieval, uh, sometimes also called music informatics research, just because we don't want IR to be confused with the, the actual IR, right? Because this is, this is not about IR at all. I mean, this is, I think be, when it began, it was a bunch of uh, maybe uh, music librarians. So uh, it was about IR in music, but uh, now it's, it's not uh, fine to that, right? It's related to anything that has um, have to do with understanding analysis, recommendation, and generation of music. Uh, it's AI for music. And the discipline in, involved in MIR, including like uh, DSP, ML, musicology, but also NLP, IR, a recommender system, uh, et cetera. Um, the flagship conference for this uh, domain is International Society for uh, uh, MIR called ISMIR. Um, so these are some of the simple IR tasks, as you can see, it ranges from understanding like low level musical concepts such as rhythm, melody, chords to high level, right? For instance, a recommendation or like maybe music uh, machine listening, right? Music generation uh, analysis. So yeah, so here is an example of uh, uh, extracting, uh, 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 sorry, extracting structured information from unstructured text data. 
Uh, so this is not like an online command kind of scenario. This is like in the back end, like when we were trying to do research uh, from, you know, just taking advantage of uh, the huge amount of text data online about music, right? And how, what we can do there. So as you can see, it involves some of the same uh, uh, same kind of technology and the tasks here. I think central here is like uh, just kind of entity extraction and linking as well as like entity uh, uh, sorry, relation extraction, any kind of information uh, extraction, and use that to build a knowledge base that is uh, about music. Uh, for instance, we could uh, imagine that we have from two different uh, knowledge bases or, or two different articles or entries, right? Uh, in this case, in DBpedia, uh, about Wilco and Sunvolt. And then we can gather some of those uh, kind of entities that are mentioned in that we mined in there, and then we we can um, link them in a way that, that, that we can build a semantically uh, enriched uh, graph. Uh, so in this case, these uh, pink uh, edges on the graph are uh, kind of inferred from taking both of these entries. And uh, one application uh, in research that we have seen is uh, a computing artist similarity from artist biography. Basically, if you're recommending music, you can uh, computing that uh, similarity with many different ways, right? So one way is uh, sim similarity through text in here, artist biographies. Um, yeah, so uh, just a little bit more about the data set uh, in music domain. Uh, KBs are important, of course. On the right, we have an example of uh, Minko music base that are uh, built. Uh, of course, this is all in research uh, by uh, researchers at M MTG, uh, my former institution. Um, uh, yeah, by, by pooling together and mining a, a lot of the uh, relevant database uh, about flamenco music. On the left, you can see a, uh, an example of multimodal uh, data set uh, with the Amazon. Uh, uh, album uh, reviews uh, for the, the these are text and then uh, million sound data set which is the audio data set and the music brains is the uh, uh, kind of semantic web uh, database for music information for instance it, uh, if you want to disambiguate it and find uh, particular entities such as a particular album or a particular track the music uh, brains has a, a unique entry with a unique music brains ID for that specific track that you're looking for. Uh, yeah, and the Mew Mew is a multimodal music data set that were published in the 2017 in Izmir, won the uh, best paper for multimodal uh, kind of uh, uh, genre classification, which is a, a, a task to classify music into like jazz or classical, right, that kind of thing. Uh, finally, the acoustic brains is a very uh, interesting um, uh, uh, data set that uh, we also came up with in MTG. The idea is that in terms of shared audio is a huge challenge for the music domain because as you can imagine, you cannot share just thousands, hundreds, thousands of sounds uh, with the research community because they're all copyrighted, right? You cannot do that. So the, the idea behind acoustic brains was that um, what if we like provide a um, what we crowdsource right what, we, what if we provide a um, kind of library uh, which in this case I mean like a Python library or C++ library uh, so that our uh, community can uh, users can download this library and extract features basically run it on their entire music library and uploading back the features onto on back onto our server. And it turns out that people are really uh, enthusiastic about this idea. We got like millions of uh, uh, entries, uploads uh, uh, within a few months, right? Uh, of course, that was when this project started. Um, part of it is just that the, um, the features that are, this, this whole idea of feature extraction, right? Uh, and also kind of the, um, uh, in that case, uh, the bag of frames feature instead of frame-wise feature uh, was a little bit less useful in these eras of uh, deep learning, right? When, uh, you know, deep learning is all about representation learning, the learning features, right? So I think we're, uh, they are trying to uh, adapt this problem. But uh, the legal case is that if you, Presumably, if you cannot reconstruct the sum from these features, then you're fine. Uh, 
yeah. But uh, I think in commercial cases, uh, it's always good to check. So yeah, so this is an example of a uh, workshop that we, uh, or uh, I mean, I was involved uh, very much last year. Uh, as you can see, uh, the the papers in this workshop covers uh, um, uh, a wide range of uh, NLP and music and audio um, topics, and we also had an industry session where. Uh, uh, all of the music, uh, many music uh, industry companies like Amazon Music, uh, Spotify, Sonos, you know, uh, Pandora, Bose, like these music companies, Glitter, uh, they came together and most of them, I think, talked about the challenges of building a, a voice uh, assistant for music. Uh, if you're interested, you can go, go there and check it out, website. Finally, uh, I want to broaden the scope a little bit and then uh, go from uh, music to uh, audio. So uh, this is also a kind of uh, um, uh, new area. So traditionally, music and speech are of interest the most. But now uh, we have environmental and sound computing as well. So these are some of the examples, like uh, tasks for sound, uh, environmental sound computing. Uh, and we also have uh, large data sets like audio set, which is uh, um, very kind of comparable to ImageNet uh, in, you know, in, this is for the audio domain, right? So uh, for instance, in the DK's uh, community, we have these uh, tasks and you might uh, notice that uh, uh, task six here is uh, audio captioning. So this is a uh, sort of a new task that uh, was added uh, uh, last year, I think, yeah. So uh, the goal is, as you can imagine, similar to image captioning, given an audio clip, you have to generate a natural language sentence to describe what's, what happened in that clip. Uh, one difficulty here, challenge here, is that audio is a much less specific and clear. It is more ambiguous. Right? If, you, if I show you an image of cat, you wouldn't say that it's, you wouldn't describe it as a gray and white animal with two round eyes, right? But but if I give you a, a clip of this uh, uh, you know percussion uh, instrument, uh, you can describe it in a number of ways that are valid, right? Depending on your specificity, and also just kind of depending on the use case, right? So uh, one of the ways that uh, people have dealt with this is the uh, uh, going with the uh, injecting a particular uh, perimeter that uh, into the model that controls the specificity, uh, which at the simplest form could be an entropy-based uh, kind of uh, 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 perimeter. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So this is actually the, the the some of the examples that were generated from the best paper in 2019 D case. Uh, I think my time is up. Uh, this is the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for coming, and ho hopefully uh, uh, my talk is uh, giving you some ideas, or maybe even uh, you know in conversational AI, but also maybe uh, inspired you to uh, come on and you know work, uh, do a little bit of work in this domain as well. Thank you.